to perform a um, out of place restore of your comm serve, meaning the scenario is your server went down or your server, your, you know, you're planning on upgrading, right? Your hardware, let's just say, right, to a beefier server. If it's a VM, you know, you just add memory to it. But if it's a physical box, um, you, you know, you're going to need to switch from different pieces of hardware. In our scenario, we have our current uh, comm serve, which is actually this guy here, um, win s server app dal uh, 01. And our new comm serve server, comm serve, right, it's going to be this uh, win server app SNG01. So for instance, this is uh, represents Dallas. So for instance, like, oh, we're going to be uh, migrating our servers to, um, you know, it's a big company, whatever the company name is. They have headquarters all around the world. Well, they want to migrate their comm serve from Dallas to Singapore. And why do they do that? Oh, well, because in Singapore, they're um, able to get um, lower cost um, servers. Their data center is lower cost. And therefore, that's why they're moving it to um, Singapore from Dallas, their comm serve, just the OS, right? So that's the scenario where we're looking at, actually. And also because labor is um, less uh, less money per hour for labor. And so that's the other reason why. There's a number of reasons why a company would do that. But in our case, this is what we're doing. And um, we're just migrating or moving actually from this uh, comm serve here. We're going to just migrate it to a new uh, piece of hardware, new total device basically. So before we do anything, we have to download um, service pack uh, I'm sorry, Commvault, Commserve 11, and Service Pack 12, right? So we got to be the same actual uh, Commserve we're building. So we go to cloud.commvault.com, we log in. I'm going to click on Store, left-hand side here. In the store, um, you're going to find a couple different things. You're going to scroll down, you're going to say, okay, what do I need here? Uh, let's just scroll down. So let's go media kits. Let's click on that. And let's just find what we need. So solution kit, enterprise kit, let's do hot fixes, hyperscale, one touch, Commvault version 10, references, Brandon media kits. Let's click on um, enterprise kits and click view all. Okay, in the enterprise kit, we're scroll down a little bit. You're going to see this right here. It says version 11 um, service pack 12 media kit zip file. So that's the one we need to download right here. That that person right there, that uh, that deal right there, this one right here. Let me copy that. That's the one we want to download. It's 10 gig, right? Um, and it gives us a zip file. So once you have it downloaded, put it on that um, that Singapore server, which is this server right here. So here's the file. It's a zip file, right? right click properties there's 10 gig huge file you unzip it it looks like so it has two files in there it has one for the 32-bit package we're not down the 32-bit I don't know that anybody uses 32-bit anymore this is 2018 doubt it anyway and then the other one is the download package when uh, XD, x64 now that our well so we've already patched our server, this uh, Singapore server. So we can just, you know, install it actually now. So, uh, so let's double click on the download package, Windows 64. Right click on the setup, do run as administrator. You're prompted with a agree, just like we did with the installation. It's very similar to, it's pretty much the same exactly when you install Comserve. We're just doing it on another box really, you know. Um, the difference being when you you're done with it, you just you just don't start the services. So we're going to do um, install packages on this computer next, or the forward thing there. So we're going to make this a com serve. This is a secondary com serve, by the way. Okay. It's going to fill in its appropriate predefined checks 
basically. Okay, click next or the little arrow thing there. Let's minimize this. We already have everything set. Our .NET's good. Shouldn't have an error on that one um, like we did before when building a version 11. This is version 11, of course, as you see. We shouldn't have the .NET issue. Um, should be smooth sailing. It should be a quick, quick install. Also because it's actually downloading it, so it doesn't have to go to the internet like the other one has to go to the internet. This is just here. It's the files are here, right? So that's the benefit of it. Um, let's take a look at our hard drive, see how big our hard drive is actually. So desktop, because it's going to put it on the C drive. And let's just see how big our, our C drive is. Yeah, we're good. Um, obviously, I think I've told this before, lab environment, no worries. Put it on the C drive all day. Production environment, uh, have a different drive. Have like an E drive that you can just increase as needed um, if possible. Verbally, a, uh, a virtual machine for your comm serve. If you can get that, that's the best way because a lot of different things you can, if you wanted to test something for whatever reason, you could take a snapshot. Um, you can P2V it, uh, not P2V rather, but you can clone it and then break it in another day, you know, another host or something, you can just break it there. Don't break your production, right? And so I, if I'm setting up an environment for a client, definitely I'm doing, um, making the comm server virtual machine 100%. And then just cloning it or V motioning it to another, uh, another ESXi host. So for instance, maybe it's in Dallas, I would just V motion it to, um, Singapore. Right, I would just V-motion the whole VM over, and that way, if my ESX host ever fails in Dallas, no worries, it's in um, it's in Singapore, it's all all good. But for this case, um, we're just pretending like we have a virtual uh, machine, and we're installing the ComServe in another server, and it's in Singapore. Okay, so we're gonna that's fine. Put it in the C drive. We're gonna click next or forward, and we're just gonna forward through this stuff here, basically all these settings. I recommend you have 200 gig. Um, let's just increase our our data store. Why not? To our, our C drive to 200 gig. It's easy enough. It's a virtual machine. It's easy enough. Added 50 gig to the hard drive, the virtual machine hard drive, right? So we got to just go to tools and we just have to make it um, increase this the size. Computer management. Tools, computer management. And then, okay, go to disk management, and we're going to see the C drive. Just right click, we'll go um, rescan disks, maybe. There we go. Okay, so we'll just right click on this and we'll go extend volume. And we're going to extend the volume of the C drive to 50 gig. Okay, so now that's all good to go. So now we go to our hard drive, refresh, or we'll right click or right click anywhere else, go refresh, and okay, good, we have at least 200 gig, so we can continue with the installation, so, um, yeah, so it recommended you have, yes, I want to, I want to, I want to continue, so our C drive, our program, our SQL server, rather, that's going to be in the um, C drive as well, click, uh, click next from that, and the content, store we're going to click uh, next c drive everything's in the c drive right as, especially uh as, including the actual dr so we're just going to same thing we're going to click a, a dr uh, we're going to click a path we're going to create a file in here called uh, right click new we'll go folder we'll call it uh, new new com serve uh, com ball or dr right okay Select folder. Okay, good. Next. And, um, hmm. Yeah, we're not going to click that. Actually, configure the proxy service. We're not going to do that. Uh, we're going to leave this uh, unchecked and push next. So, this is just basically what you're installing, what packages you're installing, and where it's installing to, right? Um, Third party software that's installing click uh, next and ooh, SQL requires you must 72 characters oh we ran into that last time okay 
So I have to exit here, actually, and then I just need to right click on this and rename it to say uh, one. And actually we can do this better. We just drag this out, put it on our desktop. This uh, 64, 64 bit, I had forgotten about it actually. So, and we'll just continue on with the installation. So we just double click on it again and just click on setup and it's going to restart or it's going to continue from the last point where we we set it up at. So we're going to room resume installation. Click next. Yeah, I hadn't forgotten about it, actually. So 72 characters, right? So basically that's like you know, from from here to here, that's more than 72 characters, like the 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 name, right? So for instance, that's one character, right? and well it was more than one character it was like a lot of characters this many characters right and then add to this many characters here as well and that's the whole reason why it threw that error that's probably yeah that's probably more than 72 characters okay all right so we're going to be you know of course the client name and the uh com serve name that's going we're going to leave that like that um, okay, click next because it's the comserve, right? So it's its own, yeah, right. Uh, let's see. So, so we're not going to disable the firewall profile uh, if needed. We're not going to do that. Um, I know before we disabled the firewall, right? We're not going to do that for this one. Okay, so the uh, database, the we're going to create a new new database. Actually, this is the uh, what is this? This is like the SQL database, the MongoDB, more like the SQL database actually that runs runs Commvault or Comserve. Uh, so we're going to create a new database. I have two gig of RAM for this VM, and what one CPU? So I'm I may need to increase it uh, if it if it hangs a bit. Okay, so we're going to head and we're going to um, try to restart this instance here. Okay, so once our Commvault's installed, we're gonna actually going to put an email address in here, um, and we're going to put it. We're going to actually just create an account in here. So, so we put our information in. So the username is admin. Uh, put our email address in, and we put a password in. So now we're ready to go. Okay, so after uh, logging in, or I didn't log in yet. I just made sure all my services are up and running on the new comserve so the old com service still has is running the service is running all that you know um, it's just that um, this I had to get the services running so both com servers are running this is the new one that's the old one I'll show you the old one yeah this is the old one so it's still running it's still up and running they're on the same network okay so we just put our username and password in and we log in while we're waiting for the new ComServe to start up. If you like this video and you want to see more, please jump on to my course, which is, I have two courses. One is at getajobnit.teachable.com and the other course is on Udemy. It's learn backup and restore with Commvault, get a high paying job. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel just type in Gary McNeely or Commvault Whisperer. There's some good content there related to this. If you would, could you click on the subscribe button and click on notifications? Thank you very much.